Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. May I invite you to take your seats. The doors are about to close as we would like to commence with our first session this morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the final day of the Planetary Health Summit 2024 and sixth annual meeting here in Sunway University in the beautiful Sunway City. And we welcome all of you to the last day of our summit. Ladies and gentlemen, we commence with this morning's session with a session entitled Climate, Peace, Security, and Planetary Health. Ladies and gentlemen, we are indeed truly honored to have with us an eminent speaker to open proceedings this morning. Our speaker for the ninth plenary is Ambassador Ong Keng Yong. Ambassador Ong is the Executive Deputy Chairman of the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies at the Nanyang Technological University, or NTU, in Singapore. He is currently the director of the Institute of Defense and Strategic Studies and head of the International Center for Political Violence and Terrorism Research at the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies. Mr. Ong continues to hold the position of Ambassador at Large at the Singapore Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He is also Singapore's non-resident High Commissioner to Pakistan and non-resident Ambassador to Iran. Mr. Ong was the Chairman of the Singapore International Foundation, or SIF, from 2015 to 2023. Mr. Ong was the High Commissioner of Singapore to Malaysia from July 2011 to October 2014. He served as the Secretary General of ASEAN, based in Jakarta, Indonesia, for five years from January 2003. He was Singapore's High Commissioner to India and concurrently Ambassador to Nepal from 1996 to 1998. From September 1998 to December 2002, he was the Press Secretary to the then Prime Minister of Singapore, Mr. Go Chok Tong. From 2008 to 2011, he served as the director of the Institute of Policy Studies, or IPS, at the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy at the National University of Singapore. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Ambassador Ong. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for giving me, giving me this opportunity to be here with all of you. And hopefully, what I'm going to say will contribute to your discussions and deliberation on what we can do going forward. I usually will summarize my uh, remarks, but here, this is a very important occasion, and this is a very important topic. I thought I should just follow my script and share with you our thinking about this particular topic. As you know, we, 
were asked to do a report on climate change and its impact on peace and security in Southeast Asia. This is a booklet that we uh, put out. Yeah, the UN body responsible for this particular subject has uh, commissioned us to work on various aspects of this topic and hopefully this report will be useful for all of you. Thank you very much for providing me with this opportunity to speak to you this morning. I understand that this particular conference has been going on for a while and the focus today is going to be on what we do next. In this report, we have tried to identify some of the things we can do going forward. But let me just uh, read what I have prepared with my colleagues from our school in back in Singapore. As other speakers have reiterated over the last few days of discussion, we are in a period of tremendous turbulence. Political, social and environmental upheavals are all happening. In fact, at breakneck speed and with increasingly devastating consequences. Just the last few days, I have my friends from Dubai and Saudi Arabia showing me or sending me all the pictures of the unprecedented rainfall they have and the consequent flooding that they have in various parts of the UAE and in Saudi Arabia. We wish that we can have this kind of rainfall in many parts of our region as well as other parts of the world which is suffering from drought and other kind of uh, problem related to lack of rainfall. But that is the kind of situation that we are talking about. Yeah, no one expects this kind of rainfall or flooding in uh, the Arabian Peninsula, but it has taken place now. As temperature rise and weather patterns become increasingly unpredictable, conflict over essential resources such as water and land are likely to escalate. Here in Southeast Asia, we have an illustrative example in the Mekong River Basin, where shifts in rainfall patterns coupled with the construction of dams are causing political tensions among nations, including China, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia and Vietnam. These tensions, currently manageable but increasingly worrying, underscore the urgent need for coordinated effort to address the challenges they brought. But for this to happen, we must acknowledge the interconnectedness of climate change and conflict. We need to implement strategies that not only mitigate climate-induced disputes, but also foster resilience and sustainable peace. In regions like Mindanao in the Philippines, several initiatives that address historical grievances alongside climate adaptation measures have been effective demonstrating the potential for synergy between peace building and environmental stewardship. Yet, the security implications of climate change extend far beyond localized conflicts. Climate-related disaster from devastating typhoons to prolonged droughts pose significant risks to human security, aggravating displacement, food security, insecurity, sorry, let me read that again, aggravating displacement, food insecurity, and social unrest. It is evident that climate change and climate resilience is not only a matter of environmental concern, but a cornerstone of regional peace and stability. In confronting these challenges, we must recognize the intrinsic link between planetary health and climate resilience. You know better than I to the planetary health is a concept encompassing the health of ecosystems and human societies. It is deeply intertwined with our ability to adapt to climate change. However, 
the path towards our respective aspiration is not without obstacles as we navigate the complex web of interdependencies. Regional and international cooperation emerges as a cornerstone of effective action. Within ASEAN, collaborative efforts on disaster risk reduction and climate adaptation, such as the ASEAN Agreement on Transboundary Haze Pollution, offers a blueprint for collective resilience in the face of shared challenges. By fostering dialogue, sharing knowledge, and pooling our resources, ASEAN nations can amplify their impact and forge a path towards a sustainable and secure future. And by working with and making use of international frameworks, agreements, and treaties under the umbrella of the United Nations, partnership, coordination, and cooperation can grow across the planet. It is with this in mind that the S. Rajaranam School of International Studies, RSIS, recently completed a study in 2023 commissioned by the UN Department of Political and Peace Building Affairs on Climate, Peace and Security in Southeast Asia. This is a little booklet that uh, contained our recommendations and our studies. The study aims to analyze the consequences of climate change and the challenges of peace and security in Southeast Asia. The groups that are most vulnerable to climate security risks and how ASEAN can strengthen existing climate change frameworks and enhance regional cooperation to address these climate-related challenges. Many of these recommendations from the study resonate with the planetary health approach from planetary health perspective, integrating climate change mitigation and conflict prevention strategies can enhance ecosystem resilience and human well-being. Promoting closer ASEAN-UN cooperation on advancing the climate, peace and security agenda is crucial for addressing shared challenges both within and beyond our region and promoting sustainable regenerative development. I am confident that the recent ASEAN-UN Regional Dialogue on Climate, Peace and Security held in Jakarta in November last year, 19, uh, 2023, marked a significant first step in initiating future global and regional collaboration. The work that has been done here in Malaysia under the guidance of the Academy of Science in the development of National Planetary Health Action Plan for Malaysia and the preparation of a roadmap which aims to take research and evidence and use them to act is something that RSIS in Singapore, our partners in ASEAN and our friends at the UN should be keen to align with. But we need to work in ways that face up to reality. Imagining a world that we want to see requires hard work and the application of science, research, evidence and ideas into policy and operational domains in this context. Prime planetary health makes sense. This need to work together must consider not only climate change, but the broader range of threats that emanate from the change to the climate wrought by human civilization. We must see not only threats, but also opportunity to act. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I am delighted to launch the RSIS Peace. Let me read it again. In, I'm delighted to launch the RSIS Climate, Peace and Security in Southeast Asia report today. I trust that it will be a useful, insightful and practical assessment to help enable governments, academia and civil society in the ASEAN region to identify strategies and step for action. 
I hope that we can build on the momentum recently generated by this report and the event last year at global, regional, national and local levels in ASEAN region to ensure preventive strategies and preparedness measures are in place in response to climate change and its impact. Malaysia's assumption of the chair of ASEAN next year in 2025 provides an important opportunity to advance strategies and actions in the ASEAN region on climate peace and security through the finalization and launch of the ASEAN 2024 community vision for the next 20 years of ASEAN community. Right now we are working on the ASEAN community vision 2024 and hopefully our member states of ASEAN will come to a consensus on what are the elements to be in this report and then we can put it out to the uh, society and to all of us involved and interested in it so that we can implement many of the important changes that have to be addressed and uh, relevant strategy to sustain our development can be implemented to go forward. I hope that Malaysia's chairmanship of ASEAN starting in 2025 will seize this opportunity and with the support of other ASEAN member states, academic and technical institutions, regional and national and local civil society organisations will help to achieve the goals which will be in that vision of ASEAN community. Let us not forget the interconnectedness of climate, peace, security and planetary health demands urgent attention and concerted action. By embracing these principles of cooperation, resilience and stewardship, we can chart a course towards more peaceful, secure and sustainable ASEAN for all of us. Thank you for your attention. So this is a report. If you have it, try to have a look at it, digest it and take out whatever you think is suitable for your respective organisation and work with partners to implement these recommendations. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ambassador Ong.